Hey, this is Matthew and welcome back to Nerd News Today. And today we've got a really cool action figure review here for you because this is one I have been waiting for for quite some time and I'm happy to finally have it. So today from Boss Fight Studio we've got, from their Bucky O'Hare line, the Berserker Baboon Bruiser. So I came a little late into the Bucky O'Hare game from Boss Fight Studio and we previously reviewed a few of the characters from it both of whom I actually missed on pre-orders for because I just didn't get them for whatever reason. And then, thankfully last year, I did get my hands on them. And once the pre-order came out for this character, I jumped immediately on it. So I've been waiting for this guy for about a year. There was a little bit more of a delay from it due to the COVID outbreak, but he has finally arrived. And today we're gonna take a look at Bruiser. So let's talk about the packaging first. And the main thing to notice about Bruiser here is that his packaging is a little bit different than the other figures we've looked at. So Bruiser here is in a box, as opposed to some of the other figures that we've looked at, or really every single figure we've looked at in this line, whereas the rest of them have all been in blister cards like this, which are also very, very friendly to take out of the box. So yeah, Bruiser here is in a box because he's a slightly bigger figure. Couldn't really fit him on a blister like this. So they decided just to give him his own special packaging. And you've got this big lovely window here in the front to give you an excellent look at the figure from both the front and onto the top. And on this side, we've got a great Neil Adams style drawing. I'm assuming it is actually Neil Adams, but since I'm not entirely sure for a fact whether it is or isn't, I'm just gonna say Neil Adams style uh, drawing of Bruiser. And I believe the other side has a bio about him with another image of him stomping on some toads. And yeah, this is pretty cool because it's got a nice description of who the character is. Talks about some of his other time in the war, but it doesn't actually talk about his time joining the crew of the Righteous Indignation. And, uh, you know, that story is basically told in the first two episodes of the cartoon anyway. But basically, for you guys who don't know, his brother Bruce was on the crew, and when Willie showed up on the ship, there was an accident that happened. Bruce went bye-bye, and Willie took his outfit, and Bruiser joined them in the following episode, basically taking the place of his brother as the Beatles UC and Berserker Baboon of choice for the team. So the back of the box here also gives you a look at a few other characters we've got in the line. So we have previously looked at Jenny and Bucky O'Hare. We haven't looked at Deadeye yet, but as you saw, I just got him. So uh, yeah, I actually would have had him probably way, way sooner, but I foolishly ordered him together. They pretty much warn you when you do pre-orders like that is that they're not gonna send one before the other, they're gonna send them all together. But no one knew that the COVID-19 outbreak was gonna happen, and that was gonna cause all sorts of extra delays onto these things. So I had to wait a pretty fair amount of time for Deadeye Duck as well, but I'm not faulting them for that. It's my choice, and regardless, he showed up, so I'm happy about that. We also have a nice little comic page here, but yeah, nothing really else to talk about with the box. So I think we should go ahead and unleash our Beetlejuice and Berserker Baboon and take a look at him out of the box. And here's our Bruiser now out of the box. Man, this thing is huge. So I gotta tell you guys, by the way, he is a pretty hefty figure, all things considered. He definitely weighs a lot more than some of the other figures in this line, and that's because he is a big, big character. That's why he's got his own special box, as we said. Very enormous. Very massive, massive toy here to be looking at. So let's start with the likeness. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty great likeness. Looks exactly like he did in the comics as well as the cartoon. Uh, with just also a little bit more of a caricatured look, you know, kind of reminds me of those figures that originally came out, which I believe were by Hasbro. And speaking of, I do have the original Bruiser, but unfortunately he is in another location I can't get to due to the COVID outbreak. I was hoping to have all my original figures as well as Bucky and Jenny, the new versions to do size comparisons with, but unfortunately I don't have them accessible. Uh, but I do have Deadeye Duck here, and I guess I'll bring him out right now. And basically Bucky is in a similar scale, Jenny is a little bit taller, but you can see how he sizes up here with the rest. And keep in mind, Bruiser is crouching down. Uh, let's see, I wonder if he can actually stand up on his legs. I don't think he's really meant to stand up much. Nah, he's really not. Uh, he's pretty much always kind of hunched over anyway. So yeah, but you can see if I raise him up a little bit, make him a little bit angrier looking. Yeah, he's pretty huge. Praise the sun, Bruiser, praise the sun. So now if you excuse me, Deadeye, I'll just take over this review now. So the likeness is great. The paint job is also really, really amazing. Very clean overall. Uh, no complaints, not really too many missed specs or odd little bits to it. If there were, not really worth mentioning because they're so minute, not a big deal. But they got all the colors right. All the details are there. Everything is in front of the right places that it should be. So let's jump into articulation. So I'm, that's actually what I'm most curious about is how well he moves around. So head goes up and down, not ball jointed, uh, but the shoulders, as we saw before, are in fact ball jointed. We've got the single ball joint for the elbow, which is pretty decent articulation as well. And the wrist can go left and right on both of them. This piece here moves, but it doesn't really do anything. It's not actually a point of articulation. Uh, it's not actually a point of articulation. I think it's just a separate piece that is a part of the 
The waist does go left and right. We do have some articulation in the leg. Uh, this is a sort of a ball joint, but you know, it doesn't really do much. It doesn't really make much sense to have him much higher than this. I mean, he can kind of stand up on his own, but he gets harder to balance. So he'll probably always be in the kind of bent over, hunched over position. Uh, and the feet have a ball joint too. So these aren't super duper articulated figures. We're not really expecting them to be that way, or at the very least not Bruiser, because he's not the most flexible character to begin with. So many ways. So yeah, again, typically he's gonna probably always be in this kind of pose anyway. So not a big deal that he can't really do much beyond that. But our Bruiser figure does come with a bunch of accessories. Let's go ahead and try and pop some of these things out and replace them. So he has a spare head, two hands, a banana, and his giant gun. So I'm gonna try and do the head and hands right now. Let's see how that goes for us. I will say you gotta be careful because that spiked collar is really sharp. <laughs> Got the head in. Let's try the hands now. Let's see how those go out. Again, very sharp. Be careful with that bit. It actually is very, very sharp. All right, I got that hand mostly in. Uh, on second thought, I'm actually not gonna put this hand in because these things are so sharp, it does make it a little bit difficult. Uh, you know, I think I could probably get it out, could probably put these in fairly easily, but it's not worth the potential pain. And uh, you know, I also don't really wanna ruin these figures because again, these joints right now, since this is the first time they've really been even played with, they're very, very tight. And so because of that, I would recommend you use the old hair dryer trick to loosen any joints up. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna have some problems like I've been having here. But just so you guys can see, this is the other hand I'm not putting on, and this is the other gloved hand. And that would have been meant to like hold a weapon or something. So yeah, I will say, you know, I think this is something we happened to have with the last time as well. Uh, I think with the smaller figures, actually the hands were a little bit easier. These guys are a lot bigger and it's a little bit harder to get in. So yeah, really just use some hot air or some warm water on it to help loosen up the joints a little bit. Otherwise you'll be in for a world of hurt. But yeah, we actually were able to get the head on, which is cool. Uh, that was something we had issues with last time was like some of the characters had spare faces. Uh, and those didn't always fit in that well. They were sometimes problematic. But the spare head isn't bad. That actually works, and it's kind of a nice yelling head. So Bruiser, as I mentioned, also has a banana. Let's go ahead and get this into his hand. That should be pretty easy to get in there. Yeah, there you go. There's a banana for Bruiser, which looks pretty good. He's pretty happy about that banana. But I think the thing that all of us want to see the most is his giant gun. And here it is. You can see this is a pretty big gun. It's even got drilled out barrel as well. Oh. That's a nice bit of detail. You know, the original toys also had these little holes in them and stuff, so that you could have put them into his belt and things like that. Uh, so I'm glad they kept that detail in there. And that is what he looks like with his gun in his hand. I bet you could probably actually get it through that hole. I'm gonna try that right now, see if we can do that. You know, you actually kind of can. I don't know if you're supposed to do it, but you can kind of sort of actually get his finger around that part of the trigger. So yeah, again, I don't think it's supposed to be that way. I'm actually gonna take it out. Um, you could probably finagle it even more and get it in there even tighter. But for argument's sake, here it is just as normal. And uh, yeah, I believe you can hold it in the other hand as well, the spare hand that we're not using. So let me do that. It looks like it's actually a better fit potentially for it. Yeah, there you go. So if it's in that hand too, that's what it looks like in the other hand. But yeah, at the end of the day, it is supposed to go into this hand here. And I'm pretty positive again, it is actually supposed to go with the trigger. So if you play with it a little bit more, I'm pretty sure you can get it on there. But I don't really want to do that today. I don't want to spend all day doing that because I already spent a lot of time off camera just dealing with the hands and the head and swapping those parts out. But again, just to give you guys an idea of what it all looks like all together now. You know, there you go. And so as we mentioned, the gun has a little hole on it. That is for it to attach to, imagine any of these little bits here. Let's see if it can do that. Yeah, there you go. So you've got it now hiding on his back. So he's got a nice handy place to hold his weapon. But really, are you gonna pose your bruiser without it? I don't think so. I mean, he doesn't really need it because he is a beetle juicy and a berserker baboon, but you know, you gotta have your weapons. So was Bruiser here worth the very long wait? Yeah, I would totally say yes. He was a long time coming, highly anticipated, and I'm very happy to at last have him as part of my Bucky O'Hare collection. He does look very good, really good detail. It's a big, big figure. Scales up, again, very nicely with other characters in the line. There's Dead Eye Duck for comparison again. You know, you gotta have Bruiser as part of the team, and it works out very well. He looks really good. His price point is much higher than the other figures, that's because he basically is like double the size and double the weight of any of them, really. So he is a much bigger figure that increases his price point. But, you know, keep in mind, Boss Fight Studio, we're not talking about Mattel or Hasbro. We're talking about a much smaller company here. And so you get what you pay for. And you're paying for much higher quality with smaller production runs. And I really have nothing bad to say about this toy at all. Really, my only problem in particular is those extra arms, or rather extra hands and the extra head, and just getting them in and out because they were very, very difficult to do that. But if you actually did come with a blow dryer, you could easily make the changes and no one will ever know differently. 
So that's pretty much my advice if you're getting these toys and you do want to do the swaps, change the hands out by using the blow dryer or something else warm to heat up the joints, make them looser. But again, at the end of the day, Bruiser is an excellent addition to your Buck Your Hair collection. He's a must have because you gotta get the entire crew of the Righteous Indignation and just a good figure. So yeah, I totally recommend him. Check out Boss Fight Studio for more information on how to order this guy. And of course, support your local small businesses because hey, we're talking about one right now. So why don't you go ahead and let your local comic book store to know that you wanna get these figures. Tell them to go visit Boss Fight Studio, make an order with them. Why not? Let's spread the word. Let's help each other out during these crazy times. So until next time, I'm Matthew from Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching, and please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys next time with some more action figure reviews and everything else we do here on the channel. Be safe.